What do you do when, when you get bored? You try to look for something else, right? Mm. Mm. So I've got three things. Mm. And I can just switch from one to the other. And I'm doing something productive, something useful, and things that I can do. And go wrong. That's good. And That's I, good. I like all three. I love it. Oh. I'll find myself as a mature dad, being a dad of all. Let's talk about it. And they're going to go to sleep. And they're going to go to Oh, yeah. And then, then we start thinking that we're fine, yeah? Yeah, no, 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 no. Sorry. Hey, 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 Here's the horrified look at the number of dad jokes that I've had to sit through, endure, and cringe at. <laughs> Here's me coming out in frame. Hi! So, okay. Where to now? Because we know that you're only going to be doing Indian um, flavoured so, or Indian style of gin of spirits. Actually, Duncan, take the other seat. Okay. Please. I feel slightly guilty now that I've taken like that much time, so sorry. No, no. So, okay. The few we're going to look at, it's 2024 in a couple of weeks. What's going to happen? With this in 2024, apart from the fact I know you're going to be producing more of your Desi Dalu and your Spice Gin, yep. what next? You mentioned during our chat there's a funny crew. Yeah, so uh, I've got that. Uh, I have got uh, a lot of different ideas. Being a craft distillery and um, me not being reliant on the income of this distillery <coughs> my own, I have got that leverage to actually experiment and see. Um, what can I offer back to the world? Because um, Indian food is known for its flavors and spices. Mm. And uh, Panipuri is one of them. So uh, many a times what we have done is when we have parties at home and we're serving Panipuris, you uh, pick a hole in, um, in oh. the... She who's currently out of home is a Panipuri themed. Oh, yes. Yeah. So there's, there's something that's going to come probably mid next year. Uh, yeah, so what we used to do, we just we used to punch holes into the funny brie and pour it with uh, some sort of alcohol and, and have them like that. So yeah, and I was like, well, you don't have to kill yourself and you can still have that flavor, just a bit intoxicating, a bit, a bit alcoholic and uh, still have that. And um, yeah, just not that. We've got spiced rums and uh, they're, they're all Jamaican style. But the ingredients are Indian, so when you look at it, Indian spirits, their base is game based, mm -hmm. and the, the ingredients that are, that are being used in uh, our rums are your cardamoms, your um, coconut, your, um, um, what do you call it, uh, like all these spices, somewhere along the route, they've got their, um, their heritage either from China or India. So. And that's my next thing that I'll be doing, literally next thing. Um, so we've done a strip of um, um, a spice drum, and we'll be doing the spirit drum probably next week. And uh, that's going to be going into barrels. We will be, uh, I'm also doing contract distilling. Um, so we have made another Indian flavored spirit, and that's for my sister-in-law. And um, yeah, so doing that, there's. Oh, it's, it's, it's got uh, 14 ingredients in it. Uh, it sits at 50% because uh, after having experience with Desi Naru, I learned that, um, well, because 400 years people were distilling it at home, they did not know what percentage it is, so they, they're used to drinking high or potent uh, alcoholic products. So 42% sells well, but it only sells with sensible drinkers. When I say sensible drinkers, people who like to drink no more than two drinks, even if they're drinking every day, on the weekend you probably take three. Uh, but people who need something to drink every day, and, uh, and people, there are people, a number of people who drink every day, and uh, Indians being the first, uh, uh, so this is the, literally the first biggest wave of Indian people who've actually reached Australia. Yeah. Most of uh, the population is, is, is actually doing your jobs and it's only what 5% of Indians, I'll say, are in professional jobs. And all those people, when they get back home, they are tired, they, their bodies are broken and the mentality is if they take a drink or two, then they will get a good night's sleep. And the booze in the market, it's, uh, most of the booze sits at about 37 to 42%. 
um, it is incredibly expensive and uh, it hasn't got any flavors of India. So when there is such a huge market out there, even if I'm just thinking purely from a business perspective, and that's what I told my sister-in-law, that I'm going to support you in setting up your business and uh, do everything that you want me to do. And uh, yeah, so we started like that, it sits at 50%. It's, we've named it Jubilee, that's an Indian folk song. So um, yeah, and uh, that is already in the market, uh, not, it, it, it's just hit the market. Um, so yeah, and that's, uh, that's picked up well. Um, so the spice rum, we are going to put our first whiskey down in the month of January. Um, when I was discussing this with a couple of bottle shops that uh, we already supply our product to, they were happy for me to do contract distilling for them as well. So there's two barrels of uh, single malt whiskey that we'll be putting down for them. They'll be bigger, um, 250 liter barrels. And uh, yeah, so I'll... So, so the barrels, what are they made out of? Are they doing the barrels? Oh, no, 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 I, I love French, uh, Spanish sherry. So uh, they will be either uh, Pedro Zernes or Lorso barrels. So yeah, and, and that's... That, it's, it's the Swedish flavor, uh, that, that, that character from, from those sherries that, uh, that can be transferred through. It's, it's just like, it will be more or less along the notes of Macallan, uh, being a single malt, different grain, different water, uh, different yeast, everything else is different, but the main, the, the, the fundamentals are pretty much similar, that you, you do a single barrel, you do a single malt, and use a PX barrel, and uh, you, you put that spirit in that barrel and you would have a lovely whiskey. So it sounds like what you're doing is actually not Indian country food, it's Indian country booze. Yeah, it's just not that. Um, I mean, I want to work on, it's just not India who's, who's actually lost a lot of its flavor and product. There's a lot of other other places as well that, uh, that they, they used to have their own uh, different spirits, but over the period of time, they vanished. So there is, um, um, sorry, I can't recall what, uh, they, they, it's reviving, uh, but uh, from Portugal, uh, um, it starts with P, yeah, sorry, I can't recall it from the top of my head. So it's, it's that's there, and even uh, from Mexican flavors, if you if you come, if, like I, I, intend to, I intend to come up with, uh, with a taco gym. So having a taco gym, having uh, your, um, like the, there is a range of as many foods are there at least you can make 50% of those flavors into spirits and even more so if you if you even if you use the same ingredients and just change the percentage of, uh, of the ingredients that are going into there it's a different flavor gin. R recipe it's a, it's a different flavor gin or, or your vodka or whatever I want to come up with uh, again I've been because people around me they they see my passion and uh, I don't know whether they just want to cash it in but uh, yeah there's a friend of mine he said he wants to do something and I've, uh, I told him you know I'll be happy to help him with vodka so um, single flavor vodkas is probably another thing that we'll be tapping into later next year and uh, there'll be about 100 different flavors of all the different vodkas so be it your pineapple, be it your cherry, be it your plum, be it your... Yep. Yeah. lime vodka. Mm. Look, there are uh, also I'm thinking of a couple of different bars who um, specialise in vodka. I don't know whether or not uh, well, I don't know whether or not they are still in, uh, they're still in business. But Naked in the Sky, they used to I believe they used to be a um, cocktail bar, and I've got a funny feeling they've got a really good. Uh, they used to have a really good range of vodkas. Sure. But I haven't been there in like five five five, five to eight years. So, <laughs> yeah, it really is quite gorgeous. But there, look for the flavored vodkas. There is a, there are a number of different, um, there are a number of different things that you can do with it because vodka is like it is all it is is flavored neutral spirit, to my understanding. Pretty much. So, so if you do a kaffir lime, um, there's or even just a stroke of pepper because there's plenty of chili. Flavored vodka out there, but if you do like the, the long pepper, yep. which 
We've accessed it. Actually, you might not want to do the long pepper. I'm not sure whether or not the Western market could take that because it's a nice, long build burn. Yeah, but it's got a very different flavor profile of the heat to chili. Yeah, um, and every product is not for everyone. And mm. it's just not that. I mean, if I've got, let's say, 100 different vodkas here, sitting here, and you want to come in and make a product of your own, mm. We can do experiment with that and uh, we can start pro putting in proportions. Mm. I know what I've actually put into the bottles and we, we can make a new product mm. out of those, those products. It's, yeah. it's a different it's idea. A, if, you want, if you want to um, go doing a run um, of say 100 bottles for your upcoming 50th birthday yeah. and you want to go putting, I don't know, dare I say it, in this analogy to the shirt I'm wearing, um, a durian flavoured gin. Oh, durian flavoured, but I couldn't think of. In, I mean, I have a hard time basically throwing up behind the, um, the camera because the idea of a durian flavoured um, vodka is everyone's worst idea. But guaranteed, there's going to be someone out there saying, yeah, I can totally do that. Yeah. And again, we don't, we don't have to put it into bottle shops. If it's available online, you just go there, you click a few buttons. I'll, I'll even, because he's already approached me and asked me, so I've, I've, I've thought about what the website will look like. It's, it's going to have all the different ranges. It's, that's your citrus range, that's your spice range, that's your berry range, that's your could be anything. So there, there's all it's just a huge website with all different vodkas. It's um, yeah. No, no, it's nice move. I mean, it's what the Dawsons are doing. Yeah. At Beechworth, and they're really pushing the envelope. It's actually you know, okay. Thank God they're moving into vodkas because they can't replace the gene. No, don't that. say that, don't say that, because Bilson's gin is not a bad gin to drink. Oh, yeah. It's quite palatable, I don't mind it, and there is a market for it. Having said that, they are beginning to specialise in some flavoured vodkas. Yeah, and a lot of RTDs. Yeah. Mm. That's the beauty about it, and all these things when you see around you, it's, uh, I seriously feel excited to see these, uh, like, uh, any person who who's tried something new and again if, if it sinks with you it sinks with you if it doesn't it doesn't and um, it's, it's beautiful like if you get everybody producing the same thing how blind will the world be yeah so we, we don't want that it's one of the things that has me thinking that at some point there has to be market saturation in the spirits industry but if you're taking the risks and a lot of people are um, and you're producing interesting stuff, what you're actually doing is expanding your customer base. Yeah. So it takes longer and longer to actually achieve saturation because like, we live in Clayton. And when I was married to my ex, I lived in Box Hill. And I always joked that 17, well, 16 years ago, I, um, I crossed the Chinese Indian border. Yeah. <laughs> but I noticed in the last 16 years, the Indian population around Clayton and Dandong and that is expanding which means your market is growing yeah. once you get out there and you get known and because like okay, you've got i think the biggest single immigration group into australia at the moment is from the subcontinent even if you look even if you if, if we just say that for one second we keep the indian population aside you try to it you like it and you're here so this is a clear sign that it, it is actually way bigger than just one culture or uh, people from one region. It's, yeah, yeah it's, the multiculturalism. Yes, and okay. uh, it's for everyone. Like when, when you look at these Indian restaurants all over the place, it just, they just don't run by Indians because there's these patrons from all over the place that actually visit those places. People want to have labor in their lives. And again, we, we've learned and we've understood that our type in food, we need more variety, but in spirits, like it, it only got legal here in Australia in '91, and uh, this is a very, very young industry. And thank you, Lark Distillery. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Bill Lark. Yeah, he was the one who challenged the law yeah. in Tasmania. And uh, yeah, I was listening to with the Distillers Institute. That's where I did the one of the courses from, and uh, shout out to the DDI. Um, and so they, they they were telling about his story as well. So um, the uh, fabricator who, who made his still, how incredibly hard it was to actually go through the whole process because that they they were 
people had no idea how to do it commercially, how to do it on a big scale, like what will that look like. And that's seriously, and being as young as the market is, um, the at least for the next two, three hundred years, I don't think the saturation will come. And also, if we say that the saturation will come, you look back in the past, and uh, these distilleries like Jamison, that's the oldest uh, commercial distillery in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been around for so long. And once you build that reputation with people, okay, our product is good, and you will be able to enjoy it yourself with family, friends, in good or bad times, or whatever the scenario is, you can always take a bottle home and enjoy it. And there's all other these, so your uh, McCallums, your grandbrothers, your um, all these these different old um, old distilleries that uh, that still survive. And yeah, and they, these all started. Some of them even would have. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they started as bootleggers. And um, yeah, I think it's how the half the American and Bourbon um, right. got started doing prohibition. They were all yeah. moonshine and spice bottles. Yeah, and there's there's a series on YouTube I think uh, about there's a really old video uh, that uh, yeah I, I watched a part of it and I'll, I'll get back to it when I get time but yeah and we, we are doing it again like I said it's not making me any money and I I'm, I don't expect it to earn my home now I've got a full time job which I absolutely love um, being a part of the project that's changing the shape of Melbourne and uh, that's that's another sense of uh, uh, giving back to the community I've got. So I, I'm not doing this for running home and that's that's why I'll be able to experiment more with it. Um, I'll be able to uh, devote my weekends whenever I do um, or in the evening I do at the moment uh, we are doing bottling as you can see at the back. So whenever we get time we, we, we just come in and do stuff. Uh, so at the moment when the operations are, are, are small our stakeholders all know about the way that we operate. And um, yeah, so like those whiskies that will be coming, we will be doing it uh, during probably during Christmas period when when I've got ten days off. So yeah, we we are organically growing at a really good rate. I've got twelve thousand bottles coming in, so these bottles are from friends that I've got. But uh, the new lot, these being the relatively extensive bottles, uh, the same quality, the same glass weight, the same shape. And um, so I'm, I'm getting, uh, it's, it's ticked all the boxes and uh, now I'm importing those bottles from, from China and I've got 12,000 of them coming and half of them I can already see because talking about my sister-in-law's um, business, I have uh, the whole line ready up, uh, lined up for her so there's going to be a rose flavoured vodka, orange flavoured vodka, your NSED vodka and uh, your um, uh, uh, another S a spiced, there'll be, there will be, oh sorry, uh, there'll be another spiced vodka. Uh, there's going to be vodka 151, which, which will be set at 75.5%. So uh, there's a, yeah. Oh, that be... Indian beer is not to hit at 9%. Yeah, that's. Old Monk beer, I think, is 9%. Uh, old, no, old Monk is, is, is a rum. So there's a beer, which is at 8%. I've got some of them sitting in the fridge, so we can share after this. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, and India being, because when, uh, when the colonization happened in India, there was a lot of beer which used to be brewed in India, being uh, huge, um, uh, uh, your barley and uh, other grain growers. Uh, so they used to make a lot of, uh, lot of uh, brews there and they exported to England. But what used to happen was, more than half of the beer used to go bad because of the, uh, the water content in the air. and. Um, being with the shipping taking two months or three months to reach England. So they found that alcohol is a preservative as well. And uh, if they increase the percentage of alcohol in the beer, then the alcohol or the, the beer will be preserved for longer. Mm. And that's how the IPA, Indian Pale Ale, came into being. So, well, like my parents, I mean, your crowd got to do was, was thirsty works. <laughs> it's cool, they had to do a lot of beer. Yeah. I actually had an ancestor in India. Oh, my first name was, is not done, it was Bo Walker. Uh -huh. um, and I was looking through the Indian music, mutiny, and sure enough, there was actually a Bo Walker at Okay. So, one, one, my, one, one, one page of my ancestor tree it was literally telling your family, just do what you're told, you know, make lots of money and one with Queen Victoria. So, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, those, like, 
all those people who would have existed at that time, they, they were just culprits. And um, I feel sad for them. That, that's how the history has been written. That is actually a, a great humiliation. When the Brits first moved into India, you've got the British marrying one of the horse, learning Hindi, and going native. That's right. In about 1850, a group of fundamentalist Christians overtake, take over Indian British foreign policy. And the moment the fundamentalist Scott Douglas take over India, run, the India office, it's when my crowd started developing delusions of lack of superiority. And it's, that's what triggered the mutiny. Is that my crowd were, well, we're white, you're brown, I'm, you know, I'm made in God's image, you're just a little heathen now, go off and do what you're fucking told. And that's what triggered the mutiny. But it, uh, initially, it's the first. When the Brits arrived in um, Calcutta and that in the 1700s, because it's six months to get home to, to, to Britain and to grab a, a white chick, all the, all the British yeah, it's were marrying locals yeah. and speaking Hindi yeah. and Bengali. Again, though, I, I won't speak for people I haven't seen or things I haven't seen, but uh, yeah, there's, there's these things, history is written by the women as always. So yeah, more, than, more than 60% of history is incorrect because it was written by somebody who won and they would not want to be seen as that way. Uh, and let's face it, and at the moment, for the last century or two, the winners have been wearing my colored face, not yours. So it's slanted again. Not only is it written by the crowd that beat the shit out of yours, but it's also written by a whole lot of people who have the original illusion that perhaps was our, our native right to go doing it to your crowd because after all, I'm white, I'm just naturally better than you. Yeah, which is sad. That's the illusion we had. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying that it's, I won't touch on that because uh, I wear more than one hats and I, I my full, with my full-time job, it's probably best for me not to touch on that topic. And oh, it's okay. We've been on the receiving end of racism out of both families. Mm. Um, to a point where I had a father who wouldn't, see, wouldn't even say that name. That's nice. Yeah, that's just stupid. So, um, this seems to... Think about it. We know that you've got a brilliant future. I will keep on buying your stuff. I'm going to see if I can you know, twist a couple of arms to get you into a couple of bars I know. Appreciate it. Um, one which is not far from Monash Uni. Mm. In the East Desi. Yep. Uh, the other that goes to Monash Place, and I assure you. Yeah. Having said that, being uh, being around Monash University, you've got people who are willing to experiment with their drinking. Yes. Yeah. Mm, that's the type of people you want, yeah? Yeah. yeah again, it's um, yeah, the, the, the whole range. Uh, that's what I've, in, in probably five years' time, my imagination is to have a bar open where anybody who drinks alcohol walks in, whatever they like to drink, they should be able to find it there. So that's, that's the kind of, uh, of place I want to create. Because mm -hmm. me, myself, I'm, I'm an enthusiastic drinker and uh, it's not that I like to drink in bulk, which I do, but I like to drink quality and I like to uh, drink, like if it's a hot day, you, you, you would want your drinks to be fruity and uh, a little more um, to go with the weather. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, if it's rainy day, then it, it, it'll be a funny for you. Know? Mm -hmm. If it's, uh, yeah, and if it's, uh, it's a really, really cold day, then you'll be able to grab a sip of the rum, spiced rum. And again, uh, one of the things I really want to do is uh, like a lot of the rum that's, that's out on the market, spice rum, uh, there's sugar added to it. I want to create a recipe in which I don't add any sugar. So people who try to avoid sweet products, mm -hmm. they, will, they should still be able to enjoy spice rum without having to take that sugar. So have the rum carried by the spices in it, yes. rather than the and tea. The, the oak. Yeah. Mm. Wow. It's going to be horrible. Um, I can see I'm absolutely going to hate um, reviewing, <laughs> reviewing your stuff. It's going to come in here. Yeah. Um, because this, the fact is that life's too short to drink bad foods, eat bad food, and do the <coughs> with ugly people. It's yeah. as simple as that. That's our, that's our philosophy. I, I made that mistake, all three mistakes in my first marriage, and I'm not doing it anymore. But no, no, no I, I look forward to um, the, your future because I think that it's brilliant. It's the reason why I've come, like, 15, 20 kilometers across town to actually sit down and get to know you because this to me is just your magic. This is the reason why I do it. Yes. 
stuff and being bored, Jeff, listen, quote from COVID. Um, it's the risk to you guys compared to take the, your imagination, your, your passion. Um, I've met one distiller who I thought, oh, okay, just go and get a wife, because he was really angry all the time, and I won't mention him. Um, I said, well, how's your job if you are loud, happy, gregarious, passionate risk takers? That's what it takes to do. And again, it's, it's not about, most of the people that I have found are interested in, in Australia are actually givers. So their, their mindset is to give back to the community. And that is in total sync with my ideology. So yeah, and any bar that you go to, any distillery that you go to, people will be happy to talk to you. They will be yeah. happy to have you over. And this is beautiful. That's, and that's, yeah. that's very much our experience. We, um, we have a lot to do with be from in view because Mick would give me feedback on my interview because I gave you next time mention what food goes with and stuff like that and I said to him one day I said why are you helping me? He goes because rising tides lift all boats. Yes, true, very true. I help you, you publicise my product, you get the word out and then, then I help you um, and we have done some wicked deals with Mick. Um, we, have you tried this um, lady custard? Not yet. Oh. We, um, we've got two bottles. Shameless plug, so shameless plug for um, Mick out of Inview. Yeah, um, we've got two bottles. I think we're going to survive Christmas. Oh, well, that's a, that's a good thing. So it speaks for itself. Nice big tub of ice cream. Look at that, like, like, like. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, my cool people, my people. This is Gandhi, the original, the one and only, the inspiration behind Yara Distillery. Stay tuned because there's going to be a shit ton more of his stuff appearing on my channel. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, share, and tell your friends. I bring only the best interviews with the most beautiful people. Thank you all. Ah, the fan club goes wild.